color and below is an illustration without evidence of citations and an outline of a persuasive speech using the problem call solution organization. No, it's not a complete speech. A narrative outline speaker could refer to while giving a speech on the threat of global warming. Well, you see, there was this movie. It's called Waterworld, right? And there's one of the actors, um, Kevin Costner, he stars as a hero, and he's going to live in a water where the polar ice caps have melted, and the Earth is almost completely covered with water. But it's all salt water, so really that's not too particularly helpful. I mean, it is all science fiction, but it paints this picture of what could happen if we don't do something about global warming right now in the present. Because greenhouse effect traps heat. I mean, it's always been doing this, but it's been getting worse and worse over the years. The world will be faced with many new environmental disasters if this heat continues to be trapped. Yet, if we take strong and decisive actions now, we may be able to save our planet for our children, for our posterity. Um, today I urge you to stop global warming. I mean, it should be simple enough, but sometimes it's really not. First, I will describe the increasing problems we can expect from rising temperatures. Second, I will explore the many causes for this threat. Finally, I will examine what we can do to slow down the damage to our world that we are already doing by taking inaction. Apathy is not the answer. The worldwide problems of global warming will increase in significance as the temperatures rise, much more harm will occur. This should be obvious enough on its own. Farmland will become deserts and temperatures will increase. This will lead to food shortages and mass starvation, which... Obviously enough, not a good thing. We need humans, we need food for humans. As ocean water levels rise, that's how we get our deserts here, because our water's not coming back that way. Um, salt water will back up into the rivers, destroy freshwater supplies. So now we don't have fresh water anymore. We have to desalinate all of our water to drink. The lack of water will cause great problems. 1.2 billion people currently do not have access to clean water. This number will increase with global warming causing many more deaths across the globe than usually occur. Currently, two billion people do not have adequate sanitation, causing many people to become quite ill. The number of ill people will obviously increase because now we've got more salinated water. Children are more likely to be the victims of inadequate water. This is because children are more susceptible to disease. I mean, good things come along that we get rid of all the old people, but let's get rid of that last time. Um, anyways, as farmland and freshwater decrease, more conflicts over resources will cause war. And we don't want to have a war over water because water will get destroyed in the war. You see where I'm going with this? Water gets polluted so easily and we have to unpollute it again. So we win the war only to get water that we have to unpollute anyway. There's really no point going on here. Entire countries and islands are going to disappear under rising seawater levels, affecting over a hundred million people, and that's a minimum estimate right now. That is literally just the simple islands of the world. We're talking 300 million people in the U.S. What do you think is spread out all over the islands in the world? I just want to put that out there right now. The changes in the climate zones will increase the insect born diseases. This is because insects thrive in a water environment. This problem can be caused by so many things. The increased use of fossil fuels is the main cause of global warming right now. In this very moment, we are using way more fossil fuels than we need to. The use of inefficient transportation modes, like private automobiles, not useful. Get rid of them. You've got an electric car. Good for you. You've got a non-electric car. No. Bad. Most electricity comes from the burning of fossil fuels. This should come without saying. But we don't need to burn fossil fuels anymore to get our electricity. It doesn't help us. We could just as easily build hydroelectric plants. We could just as easily build wind turbines. In fact, it might even be easier in the case of wind turbines. Because literally, what are they? Coiled springs. We take a massive hit right now, and we can change our entire electronic economy. 
international treaties are just not going to work in the case of global warming. The U.S. has not signed the Kyoto Accords. The European Union is ignoring the Kyoto Accords. Developing countries do not have to follow the Kyoto Accords. You're seeing a problem here. The World Trade Organization encourages growth policies that do not reduce global warming. What? This is the biggest problem of our era. All of us have to act to reduce global warming. Society needs to take action today, not tomorrow, not next week, today. We need to expand green technology in transportation and energy. Conservation of fossil fuels requires worldwide policies. The nations of the world need to create ways to penalize nations that hasten global warming and work together to research ways to reverse the damage. Damage, which I'd like to point out, has started back in the Industrial Revolution in the U.S. and pushed its way into today. We are in the glass age right now. We need to change this now. We have everything at our disposal. Our technology is so great. Why are we still relying on these old, outdated methods that will just do nothing but kill our planet? Every individual can help in power conservation, which would be the first step, because we need to let the power companies know that they need time to switch. So we're going to give them that time. We are going to start conserving electricity. We'll take public transportation instead of using our cars. Brings the gas industry down, but they learn they need to convert into electric. And we're going to buy more energy efficient automobiles, electric cars, hybrid cars. Uh, that's better. Natural gas buses. Okay, maybe. That's better than diesel buses, still. And we need to join <laughs> environmental protection groups. Yeah, I'm not going to defend that point. <laughs> you can start conservation and recycling in your community. This is our environment. We do not need to lose it. Why? Because we kind of like to live here. We're just now talking about actual possible missions outside and building colonies on other planets. It's hard to make oxygen. I, it's extremely hard to make oxygen from other things. Oxygen that we can breathe. Today we have learned that the future of life on Earth is uncertain. We know that global warming will destroy the lives of many and change the way we all live. We have learned that fossil fuel usage and lack of strong government actions is only increasing the problem. Finally, we must commit our societies and ourselves to action to reduce global warming before it is too late. Thank you for your attention to this important matter. If we can all take action now, perhaps our children will not have to live with a life to live with a water world in the future. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they'll have water in the future. I'm not sure why the notes are written that way. Anyways, ooh, what? Anyways, important outlets. Back to the actual, not a textbook. Okay. Oh, look at.